Hello and welcome to today's tutorial on GANs. The demo that you're seeing right now is called Face to Face. Uh, we're not quite going to be going through this uh, particular thing, but we're going to be going through the basics of GANs. Uh, this particular demo was created by Dai Tran, and I will uh, have the link down, down below in the description. Uh, so let me just stop, stop the demo here and uh, go to the basics. So, um, right, GANs. And uh, so GANs stand for Generative Adversarial Networks. The, the paper came out in 2013, but since then there's been an explosion in uh, GANs alone. And let me show you what the rough idea behind GANs is. So suppose I have a uh, uniform distribution, right? So, and I, and I, and I sample uh, 10,000 numbers from there. One thing that you can do uh, to this distribution is that you can have a function that uh, changes it. So for example, if you're familiar with statistics, the inverse CDF of a normal distribution uh, can convert this distribution over here into this thing, uh, into a normal distribution, right? So in this lesson, what we're gonna be trying to do is we're gonna try and learn this sort of function to convert one distribution to another distribution. Okay, so let me show you another diagram that I got from the GAN paper in itself uh, by Ian Goodfellow. So suppose I have uh, two distributions, one the real one, which is the black dot one, and the one and the green one is the generated distribution, okay, or rather the fake distribution. We have this thing called discriminator, which is gonna try and discriminate between what is, what is the real one and what is the true one. Okay, and by the way, the way that the green one is generated is we have a uniform distribution to begin with, and the generator function squeezes it into this where the screen thing is. Okay, so that's what's happening over here. So we have this, the G of Z, which creates the green one. So in the beginning, the, the blue one, the, the blue discriminator is able to tell which one is real. So for example, anything to the left of, say, that point, it knows it's it's a real data point, right? Because the green one is simply not generating any data from there. Anything to the right of say that point over there, it knows it's fake because only the fake ones get generated from that side onwards, all right? So what the green one is gonna do is it's gonna try and fake it, so it's gonna move a little bit more to the left, right? So the G of Z is now centered a bit more. Um, yeah, so, but still, um, now the discriminator you know, isn't, like I'm not sure if you can see or not, but the discriminator still to the to the left of say that point, it's quite certain that it's a real point. To the right of there, it's it's certain that it's not. But over here, there's going to be a bit of variability, all right? Anyway, it's so this process is going to repeat back and forth between generator and discriminator. We can train one or the other until the the generator reaches the true distribution, and the discriminator can't, simply cannot say uh, which one's real, which one's fake. And at that point, uh, all the probability is that it's going to give out a half, okay? Because it simply doesn't know which one is real, which one isn't. All right, so we're going to be playing this cat and mouse game uh, until convergence. All right, so if you read the paper, um, the, the maths behind it shows that there are some uh, guarantees of convergence. But uh, anyway, so for today's lesson, what we're going to concentrate on is the endless data set, okay? So we're going to say that the true distribution is the endless data set which are handwritten digits. And what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna create a, uh, a fake uh, distribution that like, sim simulates uh, the MSD. So before I only had one dimension of, of the Z variables, but this time I'm gonna have a 100 dimensional vector. Okay, and I'm gonna squeeze a 100 dimensional vector into a 28 by 28 by one. Uh, image. Okay, so, so that's, that's what's going to happen with the generator. All right, so let's, let's have a look at, um, let's, let's have a look at the, uh, what the generator function does. Okay, so it's going to take in, so uh, you, the up sample is called convolution 2D transpose, which I will go through in a bit. Um, yeah, so what it's going to do is it's going to take in that 100 dimensional vector z, all right, and the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to convert into a seven by seven by a depth vector. So this is still a dense layer, but uh, but over here, 
over here, it's reshaping it. Okay, so let me just show you a quick diagram of what's about to happen. So let's take a look at this thing. All right, so in my case, I have a 100 vector, 100 dimensional vector, which is a noise vector, and it's going to convert into a sum by sum by, in my case, I have 64, um, but, and then the next step will convert them to 14 by 14 by 128, and so on and so forth. Sorry, it's going to, the, the depth is going to keep going down, uh, but the width is going to keep increasing. That's why I chose 7 by 7, because I will eventually end up at 28 by 28 by 1. Okay. Um, now, you probably used to have convolutions that, that go, that make things smaller and smaller. Okay. But this time, we're going to have a convolution to the transpose, which actually goes the other way. All right. So it's, just, it's, it's, simply, it's simply a way. It's, it really shouldn't uh, confuse you anymore if you're comfortable with all these topics that I've shown so far. Um, it's simply doing some sort of weight manipulation to the point that you end up getting to a 28 by, 28 by 1 uh, thing. The only difference is it's actually expanding out instead of what you're used to, which is the pyramid structure which comes in to get uh, a smaller and smaller uh, vector. So that's a, that's a generator. Okay, um, we do use batch normalization. Now, um, I'll, I'll come back to the, to the end, so you just ignore it, the batch normalization step for now. All right, and so, so that's the generator. Okay, and then we have this thing called a discriminator. So what, what the discriminator is gonna do is it's gonna take a 28 by 28 by one image, or a batch of them, and then it's, it's going to, um, so if you look at the convolution 2D thing, so this time it's doing normal convolutions, right? So it's gonna start squeezing in up until we get one single number. Okay, so uh, over here, yeah, so we keep in mind we need to reshape it because we need to get one flat structure. And then the dense, the final dense thing is connecting up onto one node, okay? And this one node is gonna end up giving you the probability, um, well, in this case, a log probability, but it's gonna end up giving you the, the probability of it being true for a real image or fake image, okay? So the discriminator, we're gonna feed in the real images and the generated fake images, and, it, and its job is to say which one's real, which one's fake, okay? So basically, the, the discriminator and the, and the generator are, are gonna worse each other. And, um, and try and develop this, this model. So keep in mind now we have two neural nets instead of one, okay? So the combined network, the combined network, what's gonna happen is we're going to have the, the, the true logits, okay? So, um, if, I, I will show you a diagram soon enough, but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna input the fake ones, okay? So the fake images, and then we're gonna input the real images, all right, and then we're gonna get the, the log probabilities, okay? And for, as far as the, the discriminator is concerned, it's doing the usual cross entropy loss, okay? And the labels, in this case, are just a bunch of zeros and ones, and the zeros if it's fake, and ones if it's real. Now, that's the discriminator loss. The generator, on the other hand, keep in mind the generator is trying to fool the discriminator, right? And because of that, what it's gonna do, it's, it's gonna take the, the fake, log probabilities, but it's going to say that the labels are true, okay, for the generator. So that's, that's, that's really the key part of this thing. So the generator is trying to fool it and give it the, the wrong labels, right? And last thing that you need to remember with this thing is when we, ch when we train the discriminator, so the D loss over here, the only, only variables that we will be changing is the discriminator variables, okay? So the variable name has to start with discriminator. So if you go up here, this is a little TensorFlow, TensorFlow trick. Uh, it goes tf.variablescope discriminator for the discriminator, and I did tf.variablescope generator for the generator. All right, so in, in your own time, go through, go through the, the code. Um, but the key point is when we are training it, so when, when I'm training the discriminator, I only change the discriminator variables, when I train the, the generator, I only change the generator, right? So even though I, I'm giving it fake, uh, fake labels over here, the discriminator isn't gonna change, okay? So it's only the generator variables that's gonna change. All right, so because, of, because it's a Jupyter notebook, I have TFTOP interactive session, all right? And over here, I've shown the graph. So let's look at the graph so that you can get a better idea of what's going on. Um, 
And this, this is part of TensorPort that I, it's a neat trick that I managed to copy off of Stack Overflow. So what we have over here is, uh, yeah, so we have the, the Z variables, okay? So Z is simply a 100 dimensional vector that goes to a generator and gets a 28 by 28 by one image, okay? And then it goes to the discriminator and that will give it the, the labels of whether it's, yeah, which will go into the logistic loss function. Now, unfortunately, uh, to get the, the true images, it has to go through a copy of this discriminator. I'm not entirely sure why, but I would have loved to have seen just the images, uh, images being fed into here, right? So just, but keep in mind, discriminator underscore one is just a copy of it, okay? So when, when this, whenever this changes, this, this will change too. So it's just one of the, the quirks of uh, TensorFlow that I have to do that. Thing. Um, and if you're wondering where it happened in my code, I'll just quickly show you where it happened. But again, this is not the point of the lesson. Um, so I had to use this reuse equals true, and that's when it happened. Okay, so when I did TFL variable scope reuse, that's when it created a copy of the discriminator. Okay, but again, I'm, I'm going off in a sidetrack. Let's get back onto the lesson. Um, right, so um, and then. And then we, we're just going to train it as usual, okay? So, but when we're training it, uh, so, so notice here, I have a batch of random uniform uh, variables, okay? That it goes from minus one to one. Um, and if you're wondering why minus one to one, because keep in mind that um, uh, deep nets prefer some distribution um, or, or, or the inputs. Um, and now I would have changed the MNIST to do the same kind of thing, okay? So to have between minus one and one. Um, and anyway, um, so over here, I, I run the, the discriminator and then the generator. Oh, so it, it could have been the other way around, but the point is I'm gonna be running this thing quite a number of times, okay? So I have the batches per epoch and then epochs over here. Okay, so I'm gonna run for 10 epochs. Um, yeah, so, so that's pretty much it when it comes to training. And I'll just show you the images that I managed to train. So right at the beginning, the, the training ones, because keep in mind, all I really want to see is what the generator outputs. I don't really care about the, the real images in itself. In the beginning, that's the kind of things that I got. But as I train, I start to see that the numbers start to focus in the middle, right? And then we start to see a, a few more strokes, this time instead of blobs. And, and towards the end, when we get towards the end, we start seeing some better numbers. So we start with three, three or four, uh, a bit of a nine, and so on. Okay, so, so that's, that's the kind of thing uh, that we start to see with GANs. So that's GANs in a nutshell. Uh, please, please do go through the code and, and have a look for yourself. If you have any questions or comments, do ask. But before we finish off, uh, I do want to show off so, so right now, all we did was we changed one uh, a random distribution into another distribution. And then this paper called Cycle GANs came out and said, hey, hang on, why don't we change an existing distribution? So for, in this case, uh, distribution of courses into a distribution of zebras, right? So, uh, so that's what Cycle GANs did. But the, the other cool thing that I did was that it, it enabled from go to horse to zebra back to horse again. Okay, so over here you can see some examples going summer to winter, and it would be able to go from winter to summer as well. Um, some art styles. So there's there's a lot of applications with GANs in the art space, right? So so that's that's the main thing that I've seen. I'd be interested in seeing other applications as well. Um, yeah, so apple <laughs> apples to oranges and oranges back to apples, right? So so that's the kind of thing that you that you can do with GANs. Um, and lastly, um, the face-to-face -face demo by Dai Tran um, was himself going to Angela Merkel, which is what I showed you in the beginning. So I'll, show you, I'll put, put all those links up and the link up to this, this uh, lesson. Uh, again, please do subscribe. Please start the repository. If you have any questions or comments, uh, put them down below. And uh, thanks for watching.